Theodora. Hey there, I'm Theodora Dimov. I'm also with Perkins Ewell. I'm a senior interior designer and I've been a member of SCUP for many years. Um, I also teach as an adjunct, so planning for higher ed is very near and dear to my heart. Excited to be here. Great. Bob. Uh, I'm Bob Hicks. Uh, I'm an architect project manager uh, with Stantec, um, longtime uh, SCUP member and uh, uh, have been uh, lucky enough to uh, to work with Debbie in the past and uh, on the uh, regional, uh, both on the regional committee with her as well as Ludmila, who you're about to meet. And Joel. Hi, everybody. Uh, Joel Pettigrew with Shepley Bullfinch. Um, I'm our business development manager for higher ed. Um, and I actually, my former life was in higher ed. I was in student life and conferences and events at Emerson and MIT. Um, so higher ed is very near and dear um, and looking for more ways to get involved with SCUP and the BSA. So excited That's to be great. here. Welcome. Thanks. Um, and Lou. Hi, um, sorry, my camera is on the fritz. Um, I'm a, an architect and senior campus planner at UMass Amherst, a longtime member of SCUP, current member with Bob um, and formerly with Debbie on the North Atlantic Council and uh, an old friend of Donna, also very, uh, uh, very supportive of Lego serious play. <laughs> so uh, looking forward to organizing with you because you've done such a fabulous job in the past. So uh, these BSA SCUP events are really wonderful. Well, we have fun. We do have fun. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, I think. Are you all seeing my, my Word document here? We are. OK, super. Um, so for those of you who have been part of these in the past, um, this is really just a, a brainstorming session, just throwing out ideas, um, thinking about what kinds of things uh, we want to share. Uh, Donna and I have long talked about the fact that these sessions are intended to raise the bar for all of us. Uh, the topics are organized with a focus on um, the topics that would be timely and relevant to higher ed clients. We try not to do case studies. We don't want to see everybody's beautiful buildings. We really, and, and although we do share buildings, um, we really want it to be topical. Um, and with a focus on higher ed. We don't always get institutional participation. Usually it is architects, but, but we do think of it as raising the bar and making us all smarter. Uh, typically we'll do um, uh, panels because it is less, uh, less work for, for people they don't feel so exposed trying to do a session. Uh, typically we like to have, if an architect or a consultant is presenting, we'd like to have representative uh, institutional people just so they can share their perspective on a particular topic. Um, and, and so this session is uh, really focused around topical topic ideas, but um, feel free to, re to volunteer yourself or, or a friend or somebody you just wanna throw under the bus <laughs> to do a session. <laughs> Here um, and and uh, Niusha and Donna and I can assist uh, putting together the session, uh, but you can feel free to to do any of those things in in any amount, um, or you can just listen and see what kinds of things are happening for other people in higher ed. So topics are a focus, but if you want to volunteer, or you want to volunteer one of your colleagues. Um, or you just wanna help organize a session, uh, it's a great opportunity to reach out to clients and uh, ask them to share their stories. Um, Donna and I have been doing this uh, for over 20 years. Um, I think we've only had one or two people say, no, not for me. So typically when you reach out, people are very pleased um, to be able to share stories. So um, I will kick it off and say, uh, so typically we'll have one or two in the fall and then we, we have, because of the Christmas holidays and Thanksgiving and other things, um, then we'll have more of the, the sessions in the spring and then into the summer. Um, I'm, I've been kicking around an idea um, on resiliency on campus. Um, and reaching out to a couple campuses right now. I, I haven't had um, folks um, get back with the start of school, but um, having, especially with the recent floods, 
and also with the pandemic, really thinking about um, how we can be more resilient and not only just water resilient, but electrical, uh, digital resiliency um, and thinking about our future kind of interruptions and pandemics and what kinds of things. We wanna be talking about what that conversation would look like for our clients. Um, Debbie, and, Debbie I, didn't, I didn't think of it initially as part of resiliency, but I actually do think it's related to resiliency is the whole notion of cybersecurity on campus. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and particularly now in the age of, um, you know, are, are we in person or are we online? Um, and, you know, what are, what are campuses doing to avoid being uh, hacked or uh, uh -huh. taken over or whatever? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, excellent. Another one that may be similar, but it really is in response to everything that's been going on in the past 18 months is virtual learning and the future of the college campus. So that is re anything from campus planning and um, what has happened to learning beyond the campus walls uh, or boundaries. Um, what does student success mean nowadays? Health and wellness, it's a very broad topic so we can narrow it down. Yeah, I'm going to put these. Um, first of all, maybe tab them in because they could be completely separate. Right. Um, yeah. No, those are those are good. We did we did have a couple sessions um, on sort of the new new future of learning, uh, but it's a topic that is so broad that I think looking at different perspectives and getting different voices to talk about um, what their experiences are. And plus every day brings, brings new ideas and new opportunities, new technologies. So that's, that's great. Um, that, that will include financial sustainability or resiliency as well. Uh -huh. um, I think another offshoot of that topic as well is the student life aspects of the future of the college campus, you know, thinking about student unions in particular, um, their space is designed to get people to gather together um, and we can't quite do that. And so what are the lessons learned? What are, some, what are some good things we're taking from the pandemic that student life professionals may take forward that may influence architecture of unions and gathering spaces on campus? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's interesting. I was just dropping my daughter off at UMass Amherst. Lou, Lou is on that campus. And it was kind of a weird thing. Everybody's walking around with masks and in the town, opening weekend of a college campus town, most of the resident, the restaurants were doing takeout only. So there weren't like tons of kids hanging out, you know, gathering and in the, in the housing, everybody's got masks on. And, and it is it is a new style. Um, I mean, I appreciated their consideration and, and keeping with being safe, but uh, you know, I, I think what are the impacts? And I think to your point, Joel, they're sort of looking to the future. I think there will be some changes in, in how students do gather. Well, I, I think a, a, a corollary to that or corollary to that is uh, uh, what is a uh, post- um, we also typically do a sustainability um, session, at least one, just because. Did you get Bob? Bob was speaking at the same time you were speaking, Debbie. Sorry, sorry, Deb. I just it goes back to to the student life thing. Is uh, you know, what is post COVID resident life? Debbie's frozen. Yeah, I think the from just from the just to follow up on the UMass um, experience, I know that the town is much more closed down because they're actually quite afraid of the UMass students, whereas the <laughs> UMass students are wearing their masks and gathering in various venues in dining, where the di and the dining facilities are open to the public. So it's really kind of interesting that we've upped our. HVAC, we've built new, a new dining commons. 
um, and while well, Debbie comes up, uh, we're keeping our students around on campus and trying not to stress out the town, but the town is still struggling, I think, with um, restaurants still being closed. So she was right I'm on the money. taking note. Just, just wanted to mention, I'm taking notes as Debbie is not um, online yet. Yeah, so Debbie. I can share Debbie. my screen. Debbie, thank you. Got, got a bad connection. Hello, Heather. No worries. It happened. Hi. I talk about students just thinking. coming. They're they're arriving, and I just got off my shift of unloading and welcoming. <laughs> so, um, and we all started in masks, but I have to tell you, we're outside, and we were like, "Oh my God, it's dying of heat." So <laughs> when we would unpack a car, we would we would do that. But um, I think the um, there was a comment I saw also about the future of learning. One of the things that we're trying to do for get together. Um, is actually Southern New Hampshire University to do a whole session on what they're thinking in terms of, you know, kind of the next generation of all the online stuff. I mean, they were an institution that was different and is trying to kind of be a game changer. And they are continuing, they are developing their own products because they sort of found that there was not a learning management system that sort of worked for them and to engage as much. So that is partly a session that we're trying to pull together that would be sort of like our one day, um, different than the BSA, but we want to, I just want to let you know that that's the, that's the topic that we're working with. Just, just um, so everybody, everybody knows Heather, since you didn't nurse, Heather is, is, the current, is the current uh, uh, regional representative for the North Atlantic uh, SCUP uh, uh, Council. Um, and she just gave you a quick summary of what we are plan what's being planned for the, our fall one day uh, that we would love all of you to, to come and participate with. We wish it were in person, but one of the challenges that we've had to the point that I think Lou and others were making about, you know, different, the, whether it's the community or the students are generally just so excited to be back. Um, but the um, communities, you know, we're all focused on trying to make it safe for, for and within the community, but welcoming visitors that are coming from everywhere for a conference, sort of low on the priority. Um, we don't pay a lot of money. We're not, we, we are doing sports. So our sports teams that we rent out to, they are doing, but swimming was easy because pretty much the chlorine kills everything. Um, and um, there are various protocols, but for conferences, we couldn't find a campus that really wanted to welcome us. They were focused on other really things. Smart. So, um, well, and with the Delta, we're all, yeah, we'll just, we're gonna get very excited for the, um, for the regional main conference that's gonna be um, at UMass Amherst that Lou is, um, and her team are organizing. So that's gonna be definitely, but I'm hoping that within the BSA SCUP and locally, we might be able to find some things and even if not for um, now in the spring, and this is something that we also wanna work with the, region, the regional council is um, something on Olmsted's, so um, Frederick Law Olmsted, the 200th anniversary of his birth is in April of next year. And one of the things that we would really love to do is find a way to do, because his campuses are everywhere and we happen to be home of not only that, but his home and center and all kinds of things. Um, so I just put that out there as something in the spring, whether it's with the council or whether it's with BSA or both. And actually, we really want to work with the other SCUP regionals and locals to find, to all be doing something during the month of April that has to do somehow with the campus planning of Frederick Law instead. So. Heather, that. is there a date for the fall one day yet? Or are you still? Um, nope, there is a date. It is, uh, sorry, November. Past August, oops, if I don't have my three month calendar, um, Friday, November 5th. And it will probably be, uh, I think it's one to 3.30. 
one thirty to three thirty. I don't know. We'll we'll figure that out. But it's early afternoon. Uh, Since we're, um, let me just, this one idea that's in progress, it's actually a holdover from last year, but uh, Nangisha and I were working on the idea of open space on campus, and mm -hmm. we uh, contacted a couple of schools, but the one where we made a connection was Northeastern University, and we had envisioned this originally being maybe July or August, but now we're looking at a date in October. Uh, and um, they've agreed that we could come to campus. It would be a few minutes in a classroom and then a campus tour, but um, it's actually on the theme of a campus arboretum in that um, Northeastern, Northeastern's open spaces are, have obtained arboretum status. And um, there's certain guidelines that relate to that. I mean, it makes them eligible for certain types of funding, but there's also guidelines on maintaining and um, at least the people responsible for the landscape are excited that the open space is protected. Um, and I thought this is an interesting concept for a lot of schools that you could turn your open spaces uh, into an arboretum and learning what's involved. So um, we're just, we have two speakers uh, from Northeastern, or actually one is, um, one is new to Northeastern and I think one recently retired, but their new director of landscape was previously at, uh, at Arnold Arboretum before he joined Northeastern. And um, I have both of their names here on one of my- great pages. session. One of my pages, all right. The two people are, Chuck Doherty and Steve Snyder. Do they are they at um, Northeastern? One is retired and one is newly uh, arrived. From I think that, from that the, would be from the from Arnold Arboretum. Yeah, I mean I think it would be a great session if the topic was you know what is it to make your campus because there are other campuses I know Swarthmore is an arboretum, there are others. And, you know, it's also, is an arboretum. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's an educational tool as well. So you could talk about the programs and how the programs sort of interact with it. And then, you know, in all different ways. And I love Northeastern because it's not one you would typically think of as an right. arboretum. Um, I think that sounds like a great session and it would be great for October because hopefully we can pick a glorious fall day and um, do an outside event, an event that would gather people. I don't know. I'll put dates I don't want it to happen. <laughs> but I know I can't make trustees. <laughs> That's yeah, the big thing. E email us the bad dates, Heather. Right now, uh, Catherine had... Has, Catherine Walsh at Northeastern has spoken to the speakers and they've agreed to do it. They're just coming up with a date. Okay. And this is October, 2021, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this is next month. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm also thinking, so Lou, so the other thing that is very, I don't know whether Lou you've talked about is the UMass Brute, which is sort of weekend I want to avoid so that will be good because we would want to avoid this anyway um it's October uh, 21st 22nd um I think we've gotten off the topic of of potential uh, uh sessions for uh, for BSA SCUP though well, this, um, my session was a BSA SCUP but I you know I, I I know that I I, I realized that uh, Donna um the uh, Naisa, the uh, the February fifth you have in your notes is actually November fifth, um, and that's the that's the BSA, uh, that's the SCUP, North Atlantic SCUP one day. Mm -hmm. If you just want to thank fill you, that Bob. In. I and, sorry, lost yeah, I just, of my notes. <laughs> you know, no, no, I I I I figured you were on to something else. Um, I think going, you have the-, the I was the, trying back to, to the, connect with Debbie. Yeah, at the same <laughs> time. Um, I don't, I think her internet 
went down or something because she just froze and then disappeared and jumped on and I think um jumped back off. Yeah, it's the yeah, SCUP North Atlantic or SCUP Regional. One day. One, you can just yeah, say one day. Yeah, one day. Um Going back to the ideas for things, uh, certainly sustainability, resiliency, um, student life post COVID, I think is, I would agree. Um, and I, I, your, your notion of, you know, where will students gather, I think is, is, a, is a really important one. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at, you have the challenges and, and the ideas, I'm, you're sort of mixing both columns. Um, yeah. It, um don't worry about that. No, I'm no, I'm, I'm not worried. You'll, yeah, yeah, you're just, you're just, yeah. you're marketing, just, you're trying to keep up with us. And that's, I applaud you for that because I can't, I wouldn't be able to. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about the um, order of it. The challenges is basically compiling all of our conversation. And then in another session between Donna and Debbie, uh, the three of us can still it down, distill it down to ideas. Like what are the main ideas for the coming year? And mm -hmm. from those conversations and topics, we can come up with decisions that they will work out. I, I think and one that of the, will be shared with one of the one of the things that was referenced by Lou when she was talking about uh, her UMass experience um, is, and I think it's of particular importance right now given the nature of the pandemic is sort of campus community relations. Um, you know, to what extent to the town, you know, every campus is located somewhere, whether it's in a city or a, in a small town or somewhere. And, you know, the whole notion of how do, um, how are campuses dealing both with the pandemic as well as other things with their communities? Um, it, you know, and, and uh, it really, uh, certainly within the, within the, time of the pandemic, I think it is uh, uh, of particular importance. That's a good one. It's very outwards looking. Um, the opposite of that, the inward looking would be social awareness and community building on campus. So many things are changing. There's a different dynamics yeah. that we need to respond to. And it, it could be that both of them are addressed in the same mm -hmm. topic. Well, and, and your social community on campus um, is also, uh, you know, uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's right, um, exactly. And how is that reflected through campus planning? Mm -hmm. You know, and what, maybe, are you, what, are you, what are you doing about it instead of talking about it? No, exactly. <laughs> and how does that affect human behavior, ultimately? Um, Another one could be uh, culture and identity, because that's something that's continuously changing. And there are a lot of institutions that are really pressed to the wall financially, and they have to rediscover who they are and what their value is. Um, so you're really talking about culture and identity, not from the student body, but basically the school saying, who do we think we are and who do we right. want to be? That's right. I think, I think that's a fascinating one. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily the pandemic that's affected it. I think it's, um, you know, both dem demographics and finances and all of the above. You know, what is the value of higher education? It can right. be really broad. I mean, I think that we've, um, the last time we gathered, um, when we were in New Haven, I think sort of the theme, and I don't have the file that we have that has all the themes up, but it was like, you know, how are you differentiating yourself to survive in this world um, with sort of lower numbers coming to college? You know, that was definitely colleges and universities. What is it that different schools are doing? I mean, there's a great case study on, it's still evolving on Hampshire. Of, you know, they went out there and they, you know, had this living building challenge, which nobody else has. And yet they're on the edge. I'm not exactly sure where they are today. Um, others probably have a better story, but you know, other schools have recast themselves um, would be interesting. And then others have folded into, you know, you look at what happened, isn't it? Um, not Leslie, but um, is Debbie back on? Um, 
uh, uh, the one that BU took over for their School of Ed. That's right in the Fenway. Yeah, right. You're right. I'm blanking. We had a scup. We had a BSA scup there for a project Debbie did years ago. <laughs> Westman. Wheelock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Wheelock. Sorry. Yeah. Wheelock. Wheelock. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it, well, Hampshire's not a university, but it's that's just me being fussy. <laughs> Hampshire College. Yeah, Hampshire College, by all means. Oh, okay. No, oh, it's, it's, sorry it's, about um, that. I'm just yeah, no. following the conversation. No, no, I understand. Um, okay. And we're all and we all talk in shorthand. Thank you. Um, not, to, not to put people on the spot, but often we go around and ask people what their dream program would be, just so we can begin to hear. And there's a couple people. You know, both um, Jeff and um, and Joel, we haven't heard yet about. I know you're new to, relatively new to this group, but and anything, any ideas are good ideas. Well, Joel dropped off, so I'll take twice the amount of time. Um, <laughs> the idea I was bouncing around was actually. Could we hear about UMass's experience with the P3 topic? And P3 is obviously a topic that I think we all know about, but um, with UMass Boston in the past, with UMass Dartmouth now in the past, and starting on the public-private partnership out at UMass Amherst, how's it going? What, what's been learned in the process? Um, I'd be curious to hear how that's turned out, and is that a model that the other states' schools um, in our New England region uh, could benefit from. It seems like such a popular topic down in the South. Yeah, Northeastern also has a has a couple of P3s. Okay. Um, so that was Sorry, one of the topics yeah. I was thinking about. Uh, I was wondering, uh, would you feel comfortable presenting a session about that or gathering a panel about the P3, topic of the P3? Um, I could and Not to reach... put you on the spot. Yeah, I certainly know the architects who have worked on these projects, um, so I could reach out to them. Lou might actually have more of the experience from the owner side. Um, it'd be interesting to see who from the building authority might be able to contribute their perspective. You can certainly yeah, ask absolutely. internally someone to speak to this topic, but I find that we are hesitant to speak on something that is in progress. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just but difficult. But someone from the UMass Building Authority, yes, um, yeah, could, could talk. Could because, certainly talk about absolutely. it. Absolutely, I would love I to what, attend that as well. I think what would be really interesting is to hear about those that are done, that have been done for a while, and how is the model working years late? Like, is it financially sustainable? Who's maintaining it? What happens when things break down? How are people working together? So I think that um, the one way reason I want to stay away from UMass Amherst a little bit is because we're going to be there and we're going to focus a lot on them when we're there in March. But for the others, and I know um, Dennis is involved in our in the council as well, and we have someone from UMass Lowell and UMass Dartmouth, certainly we can. Um, so I think it's a great idea. And, you know, it would be interesting to actually hear a public schools variety of it and a private schools variety of it mm. and the various pieces and those that ha I like the idea that those have, that have been done for a while and and so how's it working <laughs> I love that as well especially if we can hear more from UMass Boston and in the age of zoom we could even import some people from other places to on the topic certainly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brailsford Brail, uh, Alan Risnick at Brailsford and Dunleavy is is uh, very conversant on P3s and has, has be a been good an moderator. Yeah. He might be a good moderator. He, probably, he could probably also find a bunch of the speakers too. Mm -hmm. And do we want to have a comparison between East Coast, West Coast, maybe the Southern states, because they're certainly doing different things? Or should um, we keep it more regional? I, I have no opinion. I could, could be either or both. Seeing more BSA, I sort of feel like it's that, but I, I feel like it's, but I, but we, it could be very interesting. And someone like, um, 
Alan Resnick probably and working for Brailsford could bring in examples of where it's happened at institutions and other locations. I mean, because there are other schools like there's a bunch in New Jersey. Hasn't Rutgers done a ton of public private mm -hmm. stuff too? Well, and, and actually uh, Stantec just finished uh, 3,200 and some odd units for, for UC Davis uh, mm -hmm. on a P3. And just wanted to point out something minor. Um, Alan is no longer with Brailsford. He's actually on the other side. He is um, uh, vice president for strategic planning at the New England Institute of Technology. Oh, which really? Is good. Yes. Oh, where? Yeah. Where is he now? New England Institute of Technology. Yes. Interesting. Cool. And, and thank you for the update. So definitely uh, wearing the owner's hat, which is very important. Well, and maybe the regional discussion is the seed that can grow into the national discussion for submitting to the national conference. Yeah, I mean, you can, I, some of these topics are definitely, I know that we're about to the call for um, even the, the um, for abstracts for the March conference is just going out. I think it's going up later it's this out. week. I, I just posted it, it in out. the chat. Ah. Um, so definitely some of these topics that we're talking about are very much topics that we've talked about in terms of we kind of um, listed a broad variety of questions, hoping to get some of these, these things um, or these topics covered. But so you'll see that and it would be good to kind of compare that and then how, how do we dig deeper locally. So Debbie, Nerusha, are you I'm, I'm sort of back, but I'm I'm struggling with my com my other computer. I'm on this one, so thank you for taking notes. Sorry, I was on mute. Absolutely, I actually at some point started mentioning that you're back, <laughs> but I was on mute. <laughs> Would you like to take <laughs> the back? I can share the. No, the no, you're good. I'm you. I I'm happy because I'm just I, I am yeah I'm not having technology issues today so. Um, not a fun day. No worries. Likewise. Yep. I ended up uh, signing in both from phone and computer just to be able to have audio and video at the same time. <laughs> no worries. It's a fun time. So yeah, I, was, I, mean, I did miss a lot of the discussion, but thank you, Heather and Lou, for being on uh, because I think this does connect. Uh, one of the things that we do, um, partly because it's uh, you know, trying to organize events is is that some of them are just kind of serendipitous, what we run into and, and who we know that can speak to something interesting. So part of it is part of an overall plan. And then the other thing is, you know, uh, timely. What is timely? And so sometimes, usually it is local, but because it's been virtual, it has opened up opportunities to go further afield. Um, so part of the thing that I mentioned at the beginning is we want to learn as part of these. And so if there's somebody that's that's further afield and we can get them on virtual, I think that's fine. Um, I think that Lou and Heather will help us connect this and, and Bob um, sort of from this grassroots level at, at the BSA level up through sort of larger topics and we can identify some that would be maybe part of a, 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 a SCUP conference or a North Atlantic SCUP conference. But we also, and Heather, you and I have talked about this, we also are looking at opportunities to collaborate on multi-session events that could happen as a BSA slash North Atlantic SCUP. Um, uh, Debbie, I think you, so you dropped off when I talked about something for the spring. Yeah. And that is, um, so what I have learned, and I've spoken recently to the, um, or at least through email to the president. I, she and I have been talking for like a year. This is the president of the National Association of Olmstead Parks. So this year sort of kicks off the academic year of celebrating Frederick Law Olmstead's life. And I thought, what a great topic. Many of us that are here um, know that at one point SCUP did, and it was led by Nash, SCUP National, it was a symposium that they did on historic, you know, the historic fabric or structures of the campus. 
there was another that was done, and I think it happened in Philadelphia of the urban campus. Um, we thought it would be great to do one on, you know, that was a national thing on Olmsted. Apparently what I've learned is that basically SCUP, because of their own limited resources at this point, is focusing on the things they focus on. But I've been um, in touch with the other regional chairs and sort of creating a dialogue. I can't believe they've never really had a normal call that they have monthly. So I'm trying to establish that to happen. And what I would love to happen in the month of April is that it would be great if we could have something that was virtual for everyone, some scholar on Olmsted. But then in every region, it's springtime, you know, have tours of Olmsted campuses or something. And so I think the BSA, BSA SCUP would be a great sort of venue to do something like that. So I, we have many Olmsted campuses and many of our SCUP colleagues have worked on those campuses, but it would be, you know, so what exactly about it that we wanna say, I mean, I think, one of the things we've learned is the importance of outdoor spaces. I think that's a little bit different, Donna, than the one you were talking mm -hmm. about, which about arboretums. How do you become an arboretum? I love that just as a topic. Um, and what does that mean? But the idea of the value of outdoor spaces on campuses, I mean, whether it's a place to put a tent <laughs> or, um, you know, gather in different ways. Um, I think that that, and Bob, that sort of goes to some of your, um, Where's Bob? The uh, like student life um, on campuses. I I know well, Marion Presley is an Olmsted scholar. Did any was anyone else aware of that? Because she was brought on to the Muddy River project because of her knowledge of Olmsted parks. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to Marion mm -hmm. in years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I worked be with great Bill. if she's still is she still doing it? Because I was looking actually up. I was looking her up for something. But if she would be willing, she's the kind of person that would be great. It's Marion with an A. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's actually two S's with that. And that happens. Presley, that right, Presley, yeah. And her husband. No, it's actually EY. <laughs> Presley, Presley Associates. Y. There's Bill and Marion are both landscape yeah, architects. Yeah. I think their daughter's been taking over a lot in the firm recently, if I don't. Yeah, it could yeah, well be. I, I mean, neither, I neither of them are that, that young. <laughs> well, well, I don't think they're much older than we are. I, I, no, I'm not saying, you know, I'm, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm reflecting correctly, Donna, you know, I, I know how old I am too. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's an idea. Yeah. Uh, on Olm and Marion on, on Olmstead, I think would be great. Uh, I didn't know she was part of it, and and actually, there's the house out in uh, in uh, right. in the in the Newtons. Well, and I think Isn't tying this back, as we said, uh, to this business uh, post pandemic of a uh, bigger interest in the outdoor spaces. I know Bill Flynn, who was a longtime member of the North Atlantic Council, was a uh, landscape architect out of uh, kind of central New Hampshire, Vermont. Um, and he lamented that there wasn't more focus on outdoor space, partly because that's how a lot of students make their choice about where they want to go to campus. Yep. What, what does it, it look like? like? What does it look like when they show up? Right. And so I think that, that tying these things together is sort of a very practical sense and, and then also kind of more of a, an environmental interest in those outdoor spaces. Uh, student experience. So there's just so much that we could talk about. And um, under that umbrella of celebrating Olmsted and, and because, I mean, he did new, uh, Grand um, Central Park and the Emerald Necklace was at a time when people needed to get out more and, and get healthy air. And I think we're back at a place where we're all thinking about that. <laughs> so, so it's very timely. Mm -hmm. I love that topic, and there's actually an extension of it, which does have to do with modernist landscapes, because some of them um, were really very much part of this the building of the urban 
sort of modern environment. I know UMass Dartmouth um, has a tremendous sort of landscape that was designed by Paul Rudolph, but some of the community colleges that were built in the 60s and 70s um, and that are essentially concrete uh, campuses like Holyoke Community College, for example, are really struggling to handle their um, concrete uh, landscapes because of the issue of you know deterioration. So maybe we can get at least one speaker onto a session like that to speak specifically to the effort that it takes to develop uh, and upgrade uh, a brutalist exterior space for a campus. Well, I mean, then maybe moving, not like it's a campus, but government center is, is going through that, that same kind of growing pain yeah. as they reinvent their plaza. I'm sure I'm sure for Sasaki, 20 some odd years. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Sasaki would talk love to talk about it. Yeah. UMass, uh, our UMass Brute uh, Symposium includes a session on landscapes that also invited um, speakers to, you know, John Amadeo to talk about the Christian Science Center landscape mm -hmm. upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but I'm sure there are others out there. Well, we could do, Debbie, to your point of a series. We could do the spring, you know, celebrating celebrating Olmsted and the exterior, you know, of or the outside of campuses. I mean, we spend so much time focused on the interior spaces and the different things that people do that maybe we, because then you could tie a number of topics. You could tie campus planning. You could tie this whole idea that the outside, what kind of amenities? I mean, pickleball is this great new thing that everybody is next. I don't know how new, but all of a sudden it's like, okay, do we have pickleball courts? Like what? Like, you know. Oh, yeah, there's on um, campuses too. I thought it was only for old folk. Yeah, uh, a, I always associate with, you know, people older than me. Yeah, well, <laughs> apparently, apparently not. Apparently there are younger people that are that are doing interested, but for some of us, the campus is, you know, they're the older folks that are the teachers <laughs> that are here. Um and others, but you know whether it's that or it's fire pits or it's like you know how do you deal with the the new thing? And so, what are amenity exterior amenities that campuses are having? I mean, and again, this might be an opportunity to get some of our landscape colleagues yep. um, to lead some sessions. Yeah, and I am, and I, I think it, I think it's a, there's a lot of things, and I think you could even tie it into. Um, how did the uh, uh, pandemic and all of these uh, suddenly we're going to have classes outside? How did that work out? And mm -hmm. and have campuses uh, re-evaluated or re-appreciated, uh, found new appreciation of their outdoor space? For years, we were told we, you know, there was like, oh, we need to get Wi-Fi outside, and everybody, it was like, no, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, last year it happened like overnight, <laughs> you know. Um, all of a sudden, and now, of course, you know, they want more. So um, I don't know. I think there's, and then there's sustainability. You can always tie. Um, yeah, that's listed. Res resiliency, you could tie those elements into this. So I feel like you could do a spring, spring fling, spring, whatever, series. I like that, Heather. I mean, I think it, it is a big topic. Mm -hmm. And also uh, with spring coming, as, as you know, it's, it's, you know, sort of bringing us back outside and, and we would have weathered some storm. We don't know what it's going to be like to the fall and winter. So, <laughs> you know, we're going to be someplace new in the spring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's I think exciting. we'll all want to get outside again. <laughs> right. You're so, you changing so, jobs again, Deb? No. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Niusha, so this is something that we could target for a sort of a larger uh, collaborative event between a NACEP and BSA step. Right. And I think, and it, and it could cover, I think, your spring, you know, if we had three or four events, two in May, two in April, it's hard. Those become busy months for sure. I mean, if we, maybe that's ambitious, but. Um, and maybe we end up with an end of the year thing and we can do an outdoor event in some parks. We don't have to pay money or a campus that, and we have a BSA SCUP happy hour celebration like in June. 
think as everyone goes off to summer. Well, campuses are generally pretty generous with allowing us to have mm -hmm. events on campus. Um, I don't know about outside because it involves a whole different other group of people um, for set up. Oh, and if we wanted happy. alcohol, if we wanted to make it a happy hour, that yeah, would be, a, that'd be tough. a whole different realm. Yeah. And there's also weather, you know, when yep. it's. You can plan and you never know. <laughs> you know who has a really cool outdoor something that if you were stuck with bad weather, you could be inside. Um, and that is Harvard Business School has this Schwartzman or something like that pavilion that is outside that I find this very cool. I, I didn't know about it and I happened to come upon it when I was checking out other things outside on their campus. And I thought, wow, that was convenient to have for, for the, um, COVID Sorry, because there, what was the name? I think it's called the Schwartzman Pavilion. I'll, I'll look it up while we're in the picture. Yeah, just, just say Harvard Business School Outdoor Space. Yeah. Or HBS, because people know what that is fine. too. Mm -hmm. Heather, this is Natasha. There's also um, sorry, I joined a little while ago. I was just listening in, but um, it could also be that there are so many colleges that are kind of in the same area, like BU and Wentworth, and, and they share public space. And that could be a way of getting a lot of different institutions to participate mm -hmm. rather than just one, right? So you have yeah. one the Northeastern and MassArt. And um, so I feel, and, and, and that could be also... Um, they could bring the community to it too. Mm -hmm. you know, so it, it could become a bigger thing. Yeah, the uh, the new field uh, and tennis courts and stuff that Northeastern just finished uh, that is shared with the Boston high schools. That'd be cool. It's right on, it's on Columbus. No. I love this conversation and how it's evolving from one topic to the other and all of them are turning out to be so rich and so many opportunities on different conversations. I just wanted to give a note that it's uh, 12.52. I have a hard stop at one, but uh, once I drop off, I make sure to share the notes with Debbie and Donna and Donna and Debbie can stay on to finish the I, meeting. But I, I just wanted I think... to mention that at one, I will. Step up. Yeah, uh, some of us, uh, others of us have hard stops. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll stick with the with the one o'clock, and then uh, people can follow up if they have additional thoughts. Um, Debbie, are you going to share this with the people on the phone call? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, um, any additional uh, considerations? I mean, I think the the landscape one. Um, let's move forward. Does anybody have a particular interest in helping to shepherd that um, with me or Donna or Neusha? Is there anybody uh, who wants to raise their hand or we can- I volunteer, Heather. No, oh. Heather's got uh, I was too. putting my head down <laughs> momentarily. Yeah, no, we're not, Heather, I depend on Heather for other stuff, so I'm yeah, not gonna he, he, But Heather brought it up, you know. He, he oh, it up, God. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely want to help. Um, usher and help shape. And I think I can be the voice of kind of the, the council and get some also help from them, but right. taking on one of them and saying, let's do it. So I'd love to be involved in the conversations as it shapes, right. but exactly leading a session. No. Right. No, I think no. Bob, here's, here's the time when, you know, you can volunteer a topic, but that doesn't mean you have to volunteer to organize. It. It's <laughs> all God. very fluid here. Um, yes. So what we'll do is, is take these notes and um, feel free to add to them. Sometimes you participate in these conversations and something will strike you. Usually me, 3 a.m. tomorrow, I'll say, oh, we should have talked about this topic. Um, Can I just add one little topic that yeah. I'm still sort of interested in? Um, and it's just the makerspace community and how it's mm. been challenged over this time period and what they're doing online and how they're coming back. Um, I did a very small presentation on the operational aspects of a makerspace for SCUP. Uh, I think it's open on the SCUP website last year or the year before, I don't remember, but it was very well attended. And I'd love to get other people's input on it. Um, I can certainly bring our makerspace director into a, a 
panel discussion virtually, but um, what is happening to makerspaces? I mean, MIT has mm -hmm. a wonderful community. How is it challenged? I, it, it just seems like something I would love to hear. And will, will that be just focused on higher ed? Would that have a continuum between K to 12 higher ed and beyond? It always is a continuum. Our community mm -hmm. essentially is always working both on K through 12 and outreach because they're very real sort of hands-on ways to teach um, kids about STEM and art and the arts as well. Um, and then there is the whole com aspect of workforce development that our president had talked about at our last conference, North Atlantic conference. Um, and there's a very serious need to develop skills and um, you know, abilities to handle the new and uh, AI challenged economy that's coming and industry. So it's broad, um, but um, it would be nice to have a way to start that conversation about what are we doing? Yeah. How, yeah. I like that idea. And I, I wanna follow up with you, Lou, and, and I think Lupe and also Heather and Theodora, you said you were teaching. Yes. From your perspective on campus, what kinds of things do you want to know more about that we could uh, consider as a session, um, you know, that you're struggling with on campus or that you just want to know more? So this is actually uh, really kind of big and has nothing to do with my uh, teaching involvement, but it's coming from parents, it's coming from students, it's coming from faculty, and it's healthy buildings impact on campus operations. What are we doing to make our buildings healthier in the current situation? How does that contribute to overall sustainability and resiliency on campus? And how does that affect um, operations in general? Because that's a huge thing. Uh -huh. I would think that, that that is very much a, you know, one of the things that I have learned from being on this side um, is that, you know, the cost of a building is really one third of the cost of it. The biggest thing is its operation and maintenance and as architects, I can tell you, we don't think enough, and I'm saying we when I was sort of in my old world, about things here. I have become academized. <laughs> um, it kills me sometimes on my architectural um, desires. But, it, you know, even Khan's beautiful library on our campus, we cannot keep that wood <laughs> oiled the way it should be. And, you know, it basically costs a kid's tuition. And when you're looking at Trying to raise money for um, raise money on campus, it's much easier to raise money for um, student, you know, student aid and all of that kind of thing, as opposed to you know the bricks and mortar per se. Nobody so, wants to give you money to, to oil the or the wood in the library. Nope. Shocking. Nope. And you know, I, for that or a whole lot of other things that we're looking to do, but um, but they're very happy and. To, to the idea of, you know, and these kids that we've just greeted, kids that otherwise couldn't come to a school like this and have the opportunity in education, to give that kid that education and that opportunity, they'll, they'll open their pocketbooks, so, or their wallets, whatever, you know, I mean, it's so, but I think it, that's going a different direction than where you were, sort of, but the idea of healthy buildings, and I also, this is a thorny topic and I'm not sure how we can do it. It's just the health of our students, the well-being, And that's something that uh -huh. I know is, I've heard is kids are going back. There's a lot of stress and anxiety about kids being back in school. So how is that affecting health centers on campus and the makeup of, I mean, that's again, a little bit different than what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's, and it's a little different, I think Theodora, than where you were going right. with it, but it is one of those things that is on our mind of, how do we keep our kids healthy? Right, and I think, you know, I've got, I've got a college age student and maybe some of you others do too. And one of the things I notice about her is in addition to the pandemic, which is a very stressful thing, there's a lot of politics. So there's world health, there's politics, there's this sort of uncertainty in their worlds where they're not at all grounded. And I think thinking about um, wellness and and their well-being, uh, you know, maybe having a, a a clinical psychologist come talk with us so that we could understand more about the kinds of challenges that these students are dealing with because I see her all the time and and she'll just you know uh, we can't watch the news when she's around because it is so stressful for her uh, to see everything that's going on in the world and it's hard for 
you know, this is their time. Like we've been around and we think, okay, we're going to get through this. But when you're 18 and 20, I mean, she just often days, I feel like she thinks it's the end of the world. And to her, you know, this is, this is, you know, I was talking to her about something and she said to me, well, I'm going to be dead by then, you know, like 20, 30 years but, from now. I said, I don't think so. Um, so it is, it's something that, that I think their world is completely upside down right now. Debbie, I totally agree with you. The mental health piece is huge for students. I have a high school student. I have a college student. The one thing, and I I have a one o'clock right now, so I have to jump off. But the one thing that I do want to mention is also my son started going back to real classes uh, last week. And the way that real classes are being held, he said, well, now I'm used to being online. I'm not really sure how I feel about going back to class for different Mm -hmm. reasons. And, And so the way that people are being taught is evolving even in person. And so he is, you know, he, there's something about the fact that he could, he could also go to classes at different times. You know, he can do, he has more flexibility mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, you know, when he's online. So yes. all of a sudden when they were traumatized though, when they couldn't go to class and now they're kind of pushing back mm-hmm. because now they're traumatized because they have to, <laughs> yeah, they were mad because they couldn't go to class and now they're mad because they have to. So then right. what is that? How, so what's yeah. contributing to some of that mad I think this whole like unrestful I, the mental health is oh, a yeah. so I know we're we're out of time yep. Natasha it's great to see you I know um, I'm sorry that I just at least wanted to come by and like you know thank you so much <laughs> thanks for joining the conversation because it, oh, it makes it richer you. so all right I, I'd love to see so, what else you guys talked about I have to jump off better but we'll talk soon and I'll I, I'd like to be involved with this group somehow Okay, well, we'll, volu- we'll volunteer you yeah. for something, yeah. Natasha. But don't volunteer me yet because I just got on the planning board in my town, so I'm trying to figure out my schedule and I'm getting off <laughs> of the BSA board this year. But yes, I do okay. want to participate, so keep me in mind. But all righty, thank you so much. And you you just send me and Donna the notes, and then we'll distribute to folks. Um, and thank you all for joining. Thank Absolutely. you, Debbie. Thanks, for, and Debbie, thanks well. Debbie, for doing it. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you. And we'll thanks, follow Debbie. Up, Debbie. Thank and- you all figure it all Hi, out. All. Great to see everyone. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Hi, thank you. Theodora. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Debbie and Dana, I will share Bye. the notes with you. Okay. okay. Thank, Bye. You. thank you. Bye. And Heather, thank you. No worries. Thank you. And um, I mean, we can figure out what's next. You know, the other thing is this was coming up, you know, so 9-11 obviously is coming. And I'm like, huh, like a current thing we could do is... I mean, I love Donna, the one you're talking about that, and I love the idea of October, you know, maybe early-ish in October. And I think that's like our first event. And, you know, if we do that, if we do the UMass Brute and we have the other thing, maybe that's it, unless you want to do something around Christmas time um, or you just, we wait and then do something in the, in the spring. But the other thing that's timely, and I don't know that we can pull it together is What's the difference? And maybe this is something somebody does for the the main conference. You know, it's been 20 years since 9-11. Everybody's talking about how that really changed our world. How has it changed campus planning? You know, safety and security is a very different thing than it was way back then. Right. Uh, And the pandemic has probably reinstituted that. I mean, we locked down. We never locked doors. Last year, there was no question that we were locking every door. <laughs> and if you needed to, only the people that needed to got in. So um, I don't know. Anyway, Donna, it's great to see you. Good to see you also. You look happy. I I am. I am. I'm hot. When I first got on, <laughs> was, we had been standing outside. All, this is the day our kids are arriving. So we're it's all hands on deck. I actually get to wear the like FM uniform and, you know, we all go and say hello and welcome. And then they find out that some of us are administrators and all of that. And they're like, wow, (laughs) what are you doing? And we're like, welcoming you. (laughs) So it's fun. Um, But all is good. Um, So this sounds great. I don't know where the next, but just keep me informed as you need me to be in I, I'm not a very good liaison, Debbie. I feel like I just, my, my liaisoning, I just want to include you in what we're doing. <laughs> well, we'll liaison. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I think, 
I, I, I think this is a good touch. It would be nice to have more, but I know we're all very, very busy. Uh, but we'll just keep in touch uh, via email and then have calls when we can. Sounds great. All right. Yeah, thanks all for right. joining. Bye, Donna, all. Always good to see Bye. you. Bye. We have to do breakfast, Donna. Yes. So we have to have a time. I don't know. Um, I'll I'm find doing... a place and I'll find a place in Beverly that um, makes eggs. Okay. I miss I good. miss being able to have cooked eggs for breakfast. Yes. No, that sounds good. And I'm I'm actually going to a PWC event this afternoon. Um, and uh, I was I was been fretting about it for a couple of days because I haven't gone anywhere. I don't go anywhere. And right. So I saw I that anywhere. listed, but I'm kind of staying. I have a self-imposed quarantine because um, we have a COVID test on Monday. We're leaving Wednesday for the dance for Budapest. Nice. Um, and I'll be gone for two weeks or two and a half weeks. We get we get back October third. Uh huh. Well, that sounds good. That that'll be fun. Enjoy that. So our breakfast would have to be early October, but I'll look. I'll, we'll I'll find, find a place. Yep, and then we'll we'll shoot for that a month from now. So in the meantime, have fun on your travels. Be safe. And we'll yes. talk later. Have fun right. to, at PWC. I will. I will. Right. Say hi to everyone. I will, Donna. Talk okay. to you later. Bye. Bye. I have to, I guess I can just assign and leave, but no, I can just.